So let's go through some basic concepts of Power Apps. Here I'm at web.powerapps.com portal. Uh, you can type the same thing to your URL and you'll be redirected to this website. You'll see a bunch of menu options here, apps, connections, flows. We'll talk about all these concepts later in the tutorial, but let's look at the apps here. And now you see the list of all the apps that you either created or they were shared with me. Now uh, you can create a new op a new app by using one of two options. You can use new app option here at the bottom left or go to the home page and create a new app. choose create a new app option. Even on home page also you can see all your recent apps here. So let's say I choose this option. It's taking me to the web based app creation experience. So it's an app creation experience uh, in the web browser. You can use browsers like IE uh, 11, Edge, or Chrome. All, all of them will work fine. Uh, there's If you have Windows 8 or Windows 10, there's also an option to use Power App Studio. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. But if you don't have Windows 8 or Windows 10, uh, you can use the web version. Uh, if you have the choice, uh, we recommend that you use the Studio uh, Windows app uh, because the web version is still in preview. But for many of the scenarios, the web version works just fine. They, it has the same, more or less same features and the experience. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's look at creating a new app. You, uh, as you can see, you have bunch of ways to get started. One is you can start with your data, uh, data like common data service. Uh, if you don't know about common data service, uh, that's fine, we'll talk about them later. It's also covered in the overview video. Uh, Dynamics 365, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint, Salesforce, and much more if you click on this arrow. Uh, if I go back again, uh, other option is to just create a blank app. Uh, and just do whatever you want to. Um, you again have two options to get started. You can start with the phone layout or tablet layout. Um, and uh, and that's a great way to distribute the app to the kind of audience that you want to distribute it to. You can reuse the same logic and create two different versions of the app, one for phone and one for tablet. Um, and the last one is very interesting. The bunch of app templates which are created for you to give you an idea of what you can create. At the same time, if you like any of them, take them uh, and modify per your own uh, requirements. So let's say I go for phone and these are different uh, uh, templates which are available uh, for phone layout. Uh, in the studio, I already have one of those samples open, employee engagement cell, uh, survey. As you can see, it has many screens, uh, different kind of screens to give you an example of how to implement them in your own scenario. You have different data sources and stuff like that. So that's that's also a very useful option for you to look at when you're looking at your own app. Uh, all right, so let's go back to new and I'm gonna start with a blank app just to introduce some concept. Uh, but once you get to know about the basic concepts, um, you can use either the template or connect directly to the data and start creating your apps more quickly. Uh, so here is uh, the Power Apps authoring experience. You, you may find it very similar to PowerPoint uh, slides and that is by design because the, uh, the Power Apps gives ability for people who are actually business user, who are used to PowerPoint, Excel, access and those kind of tools to easily create the app. Uh, on the left side, you see screens. Screens are like pages on your app or slides on the PowerPoint. Uh, you can easily add new screen from here and it gives you different page. For screen also, you get different options like list screen, form screen, uh, or even just blank. So uh, these other templates are available for you to uh, gain some efficiency. The other important concept uh, in Power Apps is concept of controls. Uh, if you have done any kind of a app development or if, if you've seen some app, you might know what controls are. Uh, controls are things like label, 
buttons, text boxes, a lot more here. They will look familiar to you for anyone who has used any app. Gallery, gallery is, uh, think of this as a grid or list of things that you want to show uh, from a table or some other data source. Data table, uh, it's like a table of data um, in a more tabular way. Gallery is more like mobile friendly in this way, vertical or horizontal way. Forms, images, videos, um, and some other interesting controls which are very really useful for phone apps, charts, and bunch of these icons. So these are very interesting uh, set of controls to make your app very rich and user friendly. Uh, for mobile or tablet devices and you can also use them on the web if you want to um, We talked about screen uh, you can have multiple screens or multiple pages in your app for any of these screen or control You can go to click on this go to home and rename the screen to make it more meaningful So for example call it main screen um, which is a good practice for all and, and same for control. Let me show you how you can drag a control. Let's say you want to drag a label here and all it all you need to do is go to that control and just click on that and it's on your screen now. Um, by default, it gets a name and just like screen, you can change the name of this control to uh, I don't know, you can put any name for your naming convention, something that is meaningful. Um, so so that, that makes it very easy for you to operate with different controls. And now another important concept that we look at is for these controls, if you click on this drop down, you'll see a bunch of options here. These options are combination of properties of the control and the actions and the events where you can take some action. For example, align, color, border style, border color, all these are properties. But if I scroll down, I see on select. On select is one of the events. So what happens if you want to handle this event? What happens when this text box or label is selected? Do you want to uh, change the color? Do you want to save something, whatever? Although save uh, applies more to button, but you get the idea. Like if I have another button control, just click on that. I got the button. I can rename it to button save. Uh, change the text of that to save. Um, at the same time, handle the on select event uh, right I'm not going to write anything on on select right now uh, because that will be more complex and we'll cover that in future but you get the idea that you can handle the on select event and let's save the data to the database or whatever data source you have um, other uh, important uh, concept to know is uh, all these uh, controls have properties and you can set these properties either as a number for example let's say 70 or any uh, static number or you can make it based on something else for example let's say that we want to uh, insert a slider control and just for the heck of it let's say that we'll govern the font uh, size of this label based on the value of the slider. So let's go back to this control. Uh, before I do that, look at the slider control. The name of the slider control is uh, slider one. Uh, I'll make it slider font size. And now let's go back to this control and I will set the size property to, instead of a static number, I'll say, I'll make it dependent on slider font size. As, as you can see, the font size automatically changed based on the value of the slider. In this case, let's say we call it 0 0.5 times the value. And that's it, you get this. Now when I 
um, run it, I can slide the slider and see the font size changing uh, for for the control where we set the property. And this was a nice, uh, gentle way of introducing formula, concept of formula. As you can see, very similar to Excel, you can set the property of any control according to a formula. And formula can be things like uh, some static value times this, or you can use the property of uh, some other control, or you can also use the property of some variables and all that. And we'll talk about variables also in future. But wanted to give you some sense of how uh, you can uh, think about concepts like screens, controls, properties, actions, and formula. And in future, uh, we'll um, go into these concepts in greater detail. Thank you.